Hello and welcome. This is all you need to know. I am Agam Vakil. Let's start by taking a look at the global markets at this point in time and see how it's fared over the course of the weekend. We've, what we've seen is mixed cues coming in from the American markets. The European markets, however, have closed with gains with the likes of the FTSE 100 advancing by 1.5%, about nearly 1% gains for the CAC as well as the DAX. And uh, well, because of that, we're starting to see well positivity in the Japanese markets, such as the Nikkei. But Hang Seng, on the other hand, has continued to slide. It's down by as much as 1.3%. Uh, when it comes to the SGX Nifty, it is indicating a marginally uh, lower opening, uh, down by as much as 24 points. But uh, how was it when, uh, when it comes to our own markets last Friday? Well, there was substantial weakness. We did see Nifty come off by around 8 tenths of a percent. Deeper cuts for the broader market indices like the small cap and the mid cap indices. And it was the same for the Nifty banking indices too, with, uh, with the Nifty bank index declining by around 2.6 percent, largely owing to the weakness that we saw in Yes Bank. And uh, we also saw weakness in those sectors which, did, which could see an advantage playing out when it comes to the weakening rupee. However, uh, well, we did see a 2% cut on the pharma index, IT index also declining by around 1.4%. When it comes to ADRs, uh, more weakness there as well. Uh, Dr. Reddy's ICICI Bank, Tata Motors, Infosys, all in the red. In fact, there was the, on the only stock which closed flat was Wipro, which remained unchanged. But um, uh, moving in, when it comes to um, well, the institutional flow, surprisingly, considering we had so much more weakness, and despite of that, we actually saw a lot of these institutions go in and buy into the markets. Of course, this is a net figure. So FI is bought in the 761 crores. DII is bought 500 crores on a net basis. However, the gross numbers were uh, extremely large, much higher than the average that we've seen over the previous few days. But let's move on and take a look at the contributors. And Yes Bank stands right at the top, as you can see. Uh, it's contributed uh, to the majority of the losses on the Nifty. It's followed by Kotak Mahindra Bank, India Bulls Housing Finance, and Bajaj uh, Finance. As you can see, a lot of these, a whole host of these are from the finance sector, and that is the, the NBFC sector, so we're going to watch out for that. And um, when it comes to the futures and options space, we do enter into expiry week, and we're starting to see, well, declines in the September series. Of course, rollovers currently stand around 10%. This is likely to, well, pick up. Uh, the Nifty banking futures, on the other hand, are seeing well fresh shots come, uh, fresh uh, shots coming in, considering an increase in open interest towards free of September futures. And uh, let's talk about the open interest distribution. As you can see, we're still looking at a range between 11,000 or 11,000 on the lower end. Uh, that's the put and the maximum open interest with the 11,500 on the higher end. And that's the 500-point range within which we can expect the Nifty to move within. But when it comes to the, the most active uh, option uh, last Friday, it was 11,200. As you can see, more writing in the call and unwinding in the put. Let's move on and take a look at uh, the India Wix, and that's advanced by around 11 percent. And um, well, Nifty put call ratio surprisingly remains unchanged, despite the fact that we did see the Nifty come off to a certain extent. And the Nifty banking put call ratio actually edged up higher to around 0 0.6 versus 0 0.43. Uh, Adani Power moves well uh, into the ban, uh, and on the other hand, we have Balram Puccini moves, which moves out of ban. Yes, Bank saw substantial pressure, and in fact, we did see shorts building in across all series. Uh, on the other hand, Divan Housing Finance, which also came off by around 43 percent, is where we actually saw uh, well a long unwinding, considering substantial unwinding not only in the September series but in the subsequent World well, Series too. And of course, Just Dial, on the other hand, has actually started to see some accumulation if you consider uh, an aggregate of all the series so far, despite the fact that we've seen a decline in the September series, but that's largely because of the expiry. So we're going to watch out for these, especially something like a Yes Bank, as well as a Divan Housing Finance as we move into trade today. But uh, with that, let's go across to Paul Allen of Bloomberg for the top international headlines. OPEC has sidestepped President Trump's demand for lower oil prices, saying it will boost production only if customers ask. Speaking after talks in Algiers, Saudi oil minister Khalid al Faleh said the cartel would continue to pump crude to meet demand. OPEC and its allies have pledged to pump an extra million barrels a day to fill the gap created by the collapse in Venezuela and renewed US sanctions on Iran. 
China Beige Book Survey says Chinese companies are already under stress even before the imposition of new tariffs. CBB International says manufacturing's long rally has given way to declining revenue and sharply falling profit growth. The report also says that the pace of borrowing is the highest since 2012, something it describes as an indication of likely panic. Comcast won the weekend bidding war for UK satellite broadcaster Sky, beating rivals 21st Century Fox and Disney to expand its empire abroad. Comcast offered $39 billion, 10% more than Fox, in an auction overseen by British regulators after a drawn-out bidding war. Fox holds 39% of Sky and is now expected to sell that stake to Comcast if Disney agrees. The New Yorker magazine is reporting new allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, which the White House says are a coordinated smear. The first woman to claim sexual assault confirms she will testify in an open hearing on Capitol Hill on Thursday. Christine Blasey Ford says she's been threatened over her claims, but believes it's important for lawmakers to hear what she has to say. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. Given oil is uh, a primary source of revenue for, for OPEC and, and these producers, it's no real, it's no real surprise that they're, they're not aggressively pushing uh, the price down at the moment. But, um, there's also the question as to whether the, the OPEC can pump more. Um, Saudi Arabia says it's meeting demand. Uh, it, it says that the market is well supplied. And other ministers have offered uh, support to keep that market well supplied. But uh, you know, how much can they really add to the market? And how stretch will it leave them in the event of a supply shock? So they, I mean, there's, there are questions there of whether they can meet demand or whether they, how much more than they can pump. Yeah, Ben, uh, talking about demand, where is that headed uh, moving from here? I mean, uh, we've got uh, concern about, uh, you know, of course, U.S.-China trade tensions there, uh, possibly hitting economic growth. And economic growth, of course, if that slows down, the demand uh, for oil uh, it comes into question. Uh, what are you hearing? I mean, I mean, demand is, uh, especially with those trade tensions, is, is an issue because, you know, China is the, one of the, the biggest consumers of oil. Um, Al Falir did uh, express concerns about demand, but you, when you look at uh, what's happening in the market at the moment, it's, it's supply is the issue. Uh, you've got sanctions on Iran, you've got uh, Venezuela's industry uh, in collapse, and that's primarily why the price is at where it is at the moment, these high elevated levels. I mean, while Libya is pumping much more than what it has, I think it's at the highest level since 2013. Mm. That's an industry that is prone to uh, uh, to conflict, and it's and at the moment the, the total market it's it's there's not a big buffer there. So you know there's a supply squeeze. So if there are uh, shocks in the market, you know we're going to see prices go higher. We can bring an additional million and a half if there is demand. We have repeatedly said that. We have brought over half a million uh, in the third quarter, starting in June, uh, and the rest is subject to demand. A lot of countries have spoken about their potential capacity, which they have, but nobody has stated exact figures because you cannot currently say the exact figure because, as we said, we'll continue monitoring and giving the market whatever it needs. And that's why capacity discussions, of course, um, have been held. Uh, Emirates have said their numbers. Saudi Arabia has said it. I just told you Russia's capacity, but not the exact numbers because they would depend on what the market calls for. We are, of course, uh, worried about the threats of sanction, slogans, putting every tweets here or there, but we continue our efforts to, to secure our situation. I don't think that that will prevail for long. The White House now has more to say on the price movement than OPEC, yeah, because partly maybe because of the tweets and the policy and the issues uh, that uh, directly or indirectly touch the oil market. Uh, and so I, th I think what's going on in, uh, in the White House has more to do with a recent uh, increase to near $80 brand. I call it Washington Premium.
Well, the stock of the day, uh, undoubtedly today, is uh, Tata Steel on back of the acquisition of uh, and signing an agreement for Usha Martin for an uh, all-cash deal in the range of around 4,300 to 4,700 odd crore. The deal is expected to be completed in a span of next six to nine months. It's subject to approvals from CCI regulatory authorities and government. And uh, with that, it adds 6.5 MTPA capacity overall uh, with the kind of acquisitions that you've had. Uh, now, remember this. Uh, this capacity is close to one MTPA that we're talking about. The objective behind the deal is to build uh, the capabilities and the long products because Usha Martin is majorly in the long products. And also it will add to its value-added segment there. So there's more share of revenue, high-end margin coming in from this bit. Uh, what Usha Martin business comprises of, one MTPA of alloy-based manufacturing com uh, uh, capacity in Jamshedpur. Now, do remember the fact that Tara Steel also has a plant in uh, Jamshedpur. So that's going to be a geographical synergies out there. Iron ore producing capacity, you have uh, the coal iron, uh, uh, the coal mine under the development, and also you have the captive power plant. That's what Usha Martin brings in on table. Uh, what Tara Steel will have to uh, shell out for this kind of acquisition is just going to be one quarter of EBITDA, given that the company's Q1 FI19 uh, EBITDA stood around 5,072 odd crore. Uh, what JP Morgan has to say, it has maintained uh, the overweight rating with the target price of of 980, which implies a potential upside of more than 50% for this counter. It says that the acquisition at EV2 EBITDA of around seven times seems to be an attractive bet. And it also says that the acquisition has been done at a very appropriate time. It addresses the long product gap and also removes the boost in power overhang. Now, do remember the fact that the company is also aggressively bidding for boost in power and steel, but then this kind of acquisition will actually actually mute down the stance that the company would otherwise would have taken to expand uh, the capacity. Also do bear in mind the fact that Tara Steel JD, uh, GDR were down and out on Friday uh, to the tune of around 12 to 20, 39 percent. Shifting focus to currency and bond markets, uh, the Indian rupee on Friday uh, extended gains for the second straight day and ended three tenths of a percent higher at 72.21 levels against the dollar. Uh, remember, the home currency did touch an intraday high of 71.70 levels uh, uh, intraday before erasing most of the gains, uh, largely weighed by uh, domestic stock market volatility. While for the week, if you see the rupee uh, has depreciated for the fourth consecutive week, it was down about half a percent. Uh, versus the dollar. Well, uh, speaking of the bond markets, uh, sovereign bonds uh, gained after 10-year benchmark bond yields snapped its five-week uh, winning streak. Uh, yields dropped nearly five basis points last week to end at 8.08 percent. Uh, that apart, India's foreign exchange reserves uh, rose a little over $1 billion to 400 and 400.5 billion dollar mark after slipping uh, below the 400. Uh, mark uh, in the previous week that was the first time since uh, november 2017 uh, on the global front dollar index now trades higher for the second straight session uh, it trades uh, well above the 94.20 mark in the early asian hours now the dollar broadly gained uh, on friday on the back of a weaker pound and euro uh, the pound fell uh, nearly one and a half percent versus the dollar on friday it's most since uh, june 2017 after uk prime minister theresa may criticized the European Union uh, for rejecting her post-Brexit plans, uh, while if you see Euro, it is trading weaker in the early Asian hours, while lastly, if you see Dollar Rupee, now it is trading at 72.45 levels uh, against the dollar in the non-deliverable forward markets, which indicates a weak opening for Indian Rupee in today's trade. Well, apart from stocks of financials, which will continue to remain in focus after Friday's fiasco, uh, some of the other stocks that we are tracking includes Biocon. Uh, now, the USFD has completed the inspection at its uh, Bangalore facility and no Form 483 was issued, so that's a positive. Additionally, Biocon and its partner Mylan have said that uh, the European Medicines Agency Committee has recommended approval of its biosimilar product uh, uh, Fulfilia. Now, this 
positive opinion will be considered by the European Commission and the decision for which is expected by November 2018. So if approved, this will be the fifth potential biosimilar approval in nine months for Biocon. Watch out for that name. Uh, next on the list is ITD Cementation, which has received orders worth 845 crores from the Ministry of uh, Shipping and Airports Authority of India. So we might see some positive reaction on this counter. Uh, third stock on our list uh, that we are watching out for is Sequence Scientific. Uh, they will acquire uh, API facility of Sulara Active Pharma at an enterprise value of about 46 crores. Watch out for that name. Next on the list is Elpro International. The promoter has continued to uh, pick up uh, small stakes in the company. They have picked up 0.27% stake on September 19. This is in addition to the 0.3% stakes that they had picked up on September 12th and also on September 17th. Uh, next uh, that we are tracking is um, Bajaj Hindustan, where B uh, Vanguard Group has sold 0.51% stake in a bulk deal, and uh, Vanguard has also stole about 0.57% stake in Marks and Pharma. These are some of the names that you need to track. So the uh, Reserve Bank of India has called for a meeting with the shareholders of Ireland FS. Uh, this is in continuation with a number of uh, developments that are happening at the infrastructure leasing and financial services company. Um, essentially, the Reserve Bank wants to know what the stress in the company is all about and how the shareholders of the company can uh, resolve it. Remember that uh, the meeting that is supposed to happen on the 28th of September is a day before an annual meeting of the shareholders of Ireland FS where they will be voting on two critical proposals uh, that the board has approved. Uh, first is a loan of about 3,500 crore and another is a rights issue of 4,500 crore. In both of these uh, applications, in both of these proposals, uh, LIC and SBI have, uh, uh, the members of the LIC and SBI who are present on the Island of board have promised to participate. Uh, but of course, the final decision on the matter remains with the respective committees of both these companies. Uh, on the 29th of September when the AGM voting happens, uh, that's when we'll get to know whether both these companies are actually going to participate in the loan as well as the rights issue. Uh, aside, uh, while the Reserve Bank of India did not respond to Bloomberg Quinn's queries, it did put out a statement on Sunday along with market regulator SEBI uh, saying that uh, both regulators are keenly watching the developments in the market space and are willing to take uh, action, whatever action is necessary uh, to sort of calm the markets down. Uh, now, it will all eyes will be on the meeting that is going to happen on the 29th of September, when all the voter, when all the shareholders of Ireland FS will be voting on these proposals. Garden Reach, Garden Reach will be the sixth government company to come out with its IPO in 2018. Now, the company is looking to raise close to 345 crore rupees at a price band of 115 to 118 rupees per share. And at the upper end of the price band, that is 118 rupees per share, the company will be valued at close to 1350 crore rupees. Now, the company is a shipbuilding company managed by the Ministry of Defense. Now, it conducts shipbuilding activities for the Indian Navy and for the Coast Guard. And along with shipbuilding, it is also into engineering and engine production activities. But it gets nearly 90% of its revenue from shipbuilding activities. The company has nearly three shipbuilding facilities in Kolkata and its order book as of July 31st was close to 20,000 crore rupees. Now along with these firm orders, the company has also been declared as the lowest bidder for these three different orders. Now the company's only comparable peer is Cochin Shipyard but unlike Garden Reach, Cochin Shipyard is also into ship preparing activities and commercial shipbuilding activities. Now if you see compared to Cochin Shipyard over FI 13 to FI 18, Garden Reach's revenue net profit and EBITDA growth rate was sub and the revenue growth rate slowed down because of slowdown in execu order execution. The EBITDA growth rate was uh, is not available here because in FI17 and FI18 the company had reported EBITDA losses and that was because of higher material costs and higher employee cost. However, on the net profit front, the company was able to report a net profit because of higher other income. Now, if you see the balance sheet of the company, the company is a debt-free company with a huge cash balance of nearly 1,000 crore rupees. Now, Cochin Shipyard also has a ca cash balance of close to 3,000. 500 crore rupees but along with this it also has a planned capital expenditure of nearly 2700 crore rupees now if you see the company's return ratios they were also subdued when compared to Cochin shipyard because of operational losses for fi 18 the company's return on equity was 8.5 percent and return on asset was 2 percent however the company has a good strong order book which gives a good revenue visibility
visibility for the company. Now, its order book is close to 20,000 crore rupees, which gives a revenue visibility of nearly 15 years as compared to only one year revenue visibility for Cochin Shipyard. But this uh, strong revenue visibility did not mean a strong profitable growth because most of its contracts are fixed price contracts, which means that any higher uh, cost needs to be borne by the company and cannot be passed on to the customers. Lastly, on the valuation side, if you see the company's price to earnings are expensive when compared to its only comparable peer, that is, uh, that is Cochin Shipyard. The price to earnings for FI18 is nearly 15.6 times, while on price to book and market cap to sales, the uh, valuations are not that expensive. For FI18, the price to book is 1.3 times and market cap to sales is nearly 1 times. Moving on to more stocks to watch, uh, the first stock on the list based on delivery buying and selling as of Friday uh, would be Yes Bank. Now that was down nearly 30% in trade on Friday and saw delivery selling of nearly 3,000 crores. The delivery volume and the total volume, both of them surged more than three times when compared to its five-day average. Second stock to watch out for, Divan Housing. Now that was down in excess of 40% uh, and saw delivery selling of nearly 920 crores. The delivery volume surged more than three times while the total volume surged more than four times when compared to its uh, five-day average. Last and final stock, India Bulls Real Estate. That was down about 13.5% and saw delivery selling in excess of 100 crores. The delivery volume more than doubled for itself as did the total volume when compared to its five-day average. Really, lots to talk about over the course of the day and you'll find all the live market action right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. All those stocks that Jayesh just pointed out, uh, whether or not uh, you have to bet yeah. on them or not, Resume. do watch out for them on uh, Indian Open and that comes up next. But for now, uh, check out these stories on the website. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said on Sunday that former French President Francois Hollande uh, contradicted his own statement with regard to the Rafale deal and that neither the Indian nor the French government played any role in the selection of Reliance as offset partner by Dassault. And the government has identified tracts of land and other assets of some central public sector enterprises which will be hived off before the select state-owned companies are put on the block for strategic sale. For that entire list, do log on to the website and check out the story. Well, that's all you need to know going into trade today. Up next is Indian Open, so do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Quint.